Time to talk Super Rugby, the big final, 7.05 tomorrow night. I'm excited about this. Weather forecast looks as though a few showers, maybe, but Eden Parker, yeah, it, it drains pretty good, that pitch, does it not? Mills, Malaya, Ina, Centurion for the All Blacks. Welcome back to the show, mate. Oh, it's good to be on the show, Martin. Um, looking forward to what's going to be a massive game this weekend, mate. Yeah, cracking final, isn't it? I mean, obviously, as a Canes boy, mate, I'm a bit disappointed. But in a lot of ways, I, I just, I'm, I'm just wondering whether at the start of the season, if we'd looked at it objectively, okay, none of us knew the Crusaders were going to crap out like they did. But I think most of us probably thought that this Chiefs team would just go on and be better than they were last year. And now here they've got a chance to prove themselves. Yeah, Hundred percent, you're you're not wrong there. Given the fact that uh, yeah, okay, they would have lost they lost a couple of key players and Retallick and uh, obviously Brad Weber, but they still had the nucleus of a of an outstanding side, a young side that were some, sort of going to be sort of there together. Um, but I don't think anyone expected the way they came out and sort of blew the Hurricanes uh, away last week, and you know thoroughly deserved the you know being in, in the final against you know what's been a, a really out, you know I suppose different sort of Blues outfit this year. Yeah, look, at a blue side, that's really muscled up. And I think most of us, you know, and I've been watching you guys and listening to your comments as well, and I think most people have acknowledged that, haven't they? Vern Cotter has brought something to that side. Oh, man, has he what? Um, And unexpectedly as well. I mean, you've always seen the Blues have kind of um, entertained uh, in terms of the style that they have. Certainly they've got the players to be able to do that. But the way they've kind of gone about sort of, and the discipline really, I think, in holding the ball, um, strangling other uh, defences in, in terms of the way they carry the ball, everyone sort of getting into that sort of once they get into their own half, they're just holding on to it. Um, but you know, is, are they going to be disciplined enough to sort of stay there? And this is what really intrigues me about this panel because you've got a context of two different styles. The Chiefs, you know, they love to throw it, be a bit, bit expensive. The Blues, on the other hand, um, providing a, a totally different game plan, holding the ball. Some would probably say. Um, the boring sort of style, but it's not boring. It's, it's actually, you know, really good. But there's an element in the Blues style where are they disciplined enough to stay in that? You know, stay in that sort of um, this hold the ball, strangle other sides, knowing fully well and, and not to get sort of trapped in a hey, let's go go with the Chiefs at, at that time and try and play that expensive game. And that's why it's so intriguing, you know, because the Blues can play that style, but are they are they going to be sucked into playing that style against the Chiefs outfit that can absolutely blow you away? Mills, there's nothing boring about winning and you've been there, mate, and you know how to do this as well. Uh, you know, they've got a pragmatism about them this year. That's what I like about the Blues. And 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 we know that, you know, they've had that razzle-dazzle thing going on, but that hasn't won them anything. So maybe this is what, you know, the pragmatism that Vern has bought. OK, it's good, to, it's good and it's fine to do that, boys, but you haven't actually got a trophy. This is the way we win a trophy. Maybe that's the message. Yeah, and, and, and what a person to be able to come in and do that. I think, you know, everyone, when you sort of... Uh, heard Vern Cotter's name, um, you know, announced as, as the coach. We always knew that he was going to bring that hard edge. The big thing about that, and you mentioned it, is the razzle dazzle. I mean, you've got a different type of athlete up here in Auckland. You've got a different type of uh, personnel, and, you're, and, and how do you get that across to these guys? Um, and the way he's gone about it, and the belief they've got within their team um, to be able to win, and the way they've sort of gone about it, they've been under pressure a few times. There's no doubt about that. But they've always gone back to what they're known best throughout this campaign, and that's holding on to the ball, carrying with really well, and uh, and the accuracy around the way they've sort of held the ball. Um, man, that's been impressive this year from the Blues. Uh, just to, you know, I've, I've looked at the, the the loose forwards, and I, you know, I talked about this with Liam yesterday, Liam Messam, and also Ali Williams yesterday. And that battle in itself, within a battle, I just, I mean, you know, you talk about intrigue. I just can't wait till I see these looseys go up against each other. Where else do you think that we should be looking at? Um, obviously, there's some outside backs. You know, got power and pace in both of those. But essentially, I suppose the long-winded question is, where's it going to be won? Oh man. Well... It's, it's up front, isn't it? And, you know, when you get to these, you know, sort of um, massive games, it's going to be up front. And North Otonga, Fassi, you know, Riccatelli, Renata, you know, they've, they've shown their way. 39 old penalties, have, you know, they've got from scrum time. So the set piece is always going to be crucial. Can, you know, I suppose Tyrone Thompson coming back into the fold. Yes, we know he's, he's an exceptional player in terms of uh, running around the park. You know, what is this, this set piece going to look like for, for the Chiefs, particularly of scrum and line-out? Um, another huge battle for me, I have to say, is the midfield. Uh, Anton Leonard-Brown, 
Um, he's in great form at the moment. Uh, he's up against uh, you know, Rico, uh, Rico Ioane. Um, so two All Blacks going toe to toe in that department. But then you look inside them, and you got you know Lamb, uh, and, and also um, you know Poihipi. I mean, far out. You know, future of, of this game is. Uh, is looking bright in terms of those two guys that are that are facing off against each other. So I think that battle also, um, getting over the game line and assisting in terms of the the way they um, assist their sort of their front row because there's no doubt about it. There's no love lost between these two, the State Highway One and these yeah, two yeah, yeah. teams. Yep. It's going to be a physical battle. People know, a lot of people probably don't realise here. I mean, you know, most people probably think I'm Mills Chiefs guy, of course. Yeah, um, but you won a title with the Blues, man. I do. I mean, I'm, I am literally like I, I when they were confirmed. I, uh, I mean, I, I love both teams. Um, having won a title for the Blues, my time at the Chiefs, and obviously kept in kept in the Chiefs and um, you know, both sides. And I've always been divided. And I told myself this week that I'll actually have a calculated approach to to this game in terms of who I sort of wanted to win, rather than the emotional side. But I've got to this end of this week, and I'm just wondering myself, man, it's just, I'm, in, I'm really, in, I still can't pick it. Go on. I can't pick it because of the two different styles. And then when I draw on the emotion, man, I can't even draw on that, mate. And at the end of the day, it's, it's a win-win for me because whoever wins, I'm, I'm hopefully still invited to both sort of uh, both <laughs> change rooms. And that's all that matters. <laughs> um, Damien McKenzie last week. Now, I've you know been and quite quite you know happy to say, look, I've, I've had doubts at the start of the year about whether he can rein in all his adventurousness and actually just control the game, run that cutter. And I saw that last week against the Hurricanes. I thought he controlled that game brilliantly. Uh, his goal kicking was superb, which is exactly what the All Blacks need. It's not about restricting anything he does. It's just about making the exact right decisions at the right time, which is really crucial at a level like this. And I think this is really important for him as well. Yeah, man. I, I mean, the way he's gone about his game, um, we, we know how exciting he is. We know he can create something out of nothing. He'll go backwards to, to get, go forward and make sort of breaks. But the big thing that you've sort of seen, and it's, it's probably, um, you don't, you rarely see that, is the way that the Chiefs have been able to adapt to that, to the, adapt the, their style of play to fit the way that McKenzie has. Uh, and that's why they're so dangerous. Um, you know, yeah, his goal kicking, his, his, uh, his motivations up, his, his skill set, um, you know, is, is exceptional. But I think collectively, um, the uniqueness about this Chiefs outfit and the way they're playing the game is, is, is suited around the way that McKenzie's McKenzie plays, you know, the ability to adapt and something hasn't quite gone gone right. They've, they've had to, to do that for the last couple of years, and I think for the first time, yes, they lost the final last year, for the first time they're actually starting to get into a really nice rhythm in terms of the way they play.